Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Let's share screen too. Share. All right. Let me see if I'm the chat. I can put the chat in here. Why is not working? Okay. Um, hey guys, somebody give me a sound check in chat. Ask for us. I'm just gonna also. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sounds good. Um, why nobody chatting with me into um, into the um, uh, God, Zoom window? Everybody, somebody say hello. Somebody. Okay, good. Got it. All right. I just want to make sure because I'm. I'm we usually we're only using Slack, but because you guys, shh, calm down, calm down. Calm down. Um, usually we're using Slack. Now you guys, uh, the other thing I want to make sure is you guys are seeing um, both screens. You're seeing the um, AMP screen and the Trading View screen, correct? Just tell me yes and chat ask for us. Because I use, I'm using something called Windows Power Tools, which splits the screen in two. So it gives us a lot more. It just gives me flexibility to basically trade and show, trade and show. At the same time, should be a should be a lot simpler. Um, so the other thing I want to show you is let me just log into. I wonder if I can log into this thing. Yeah, I think I can. This is just ridiculous at how um, the the Algo Trade account has just been. So I left you yesterday. It was around seven hundred, right? I left you yesterday. It was around seven hundred. I left it on. I literally thought today was going to be complete chop fest city. I didn't even I didn't even put on my 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 own accounts on it because I was like I'm going to wait for the for the FOMC, um, and it really was very very slow. But look at how well um, and again no no overlays at all. Just literally just trading the full um, the full complex on a filtered basis. Um, look at the history here from let's just. Uh, Go show, 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 custom period, just from yesterday. Um, just even today. Look at that. I mean, just really, really solid. A lot of it coming out from NQ, by the way, right? And this is just today. And if I, was, if I were to do it, if I do custom period um, from yesterday, Look at that, 355. That's a ridiculous, ridiculous performance. There should be no way it should be this, this good. But it's doing a really good job because it's just staying with trend. And honestly, um, there's nothing much to show but just to, um, you know, to let it play itself out. All right, I want to change. I'm going to let the algo one uh, go by itself. Um, anything, it, it takes any trades, I'll let you guys know. But I just wanted to kind of give you an update on how well it was doing. Let me change accounts, log into trade account. What was the other trade account I was doing? Was this one? Is this one? Yeah. All right. Let me put the algos on. So we got a big pop on the open uh, in NQ. There's no, I don't have any, the algo has no trades. It just, it just took profits on the long side of the position. Um, but you see, I mean, like just, you know, it took the NQs, came in on the long side here. That was a super clean trade at 830. Um, it's just a pleasure to, to, you know, to have it run um, on a, um, on a full-time basis. And I, I think the reason why it's running so successfully is because I really got the stops and targets properly at basically one basis point of the notional. Um, so, you know, I'm using 20, uh, what's actually, 
yeah, I guess it's right. It's one and a half basis points on NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is 14 points on, on the notional for basis point. And I'm using 20. So it's one and a half on NASDAQ because of the volatility. And about one on the Dow, which is a, you know 34,000. So I'm using 40 as my stop. And then I'm deriving, deriving my, this is the interesting thing. I, you know, I sort of wanted to kind of show this to you. I'm basically deriving the way we, we, we kind of create the strategy is we don't look for targets. We figure out what is the reasonable stop, like the stop that will be least hit given our you know, structure. And then we figure out the target out of that. So we figure out, you know, we basically try to go for half target out of that and hope to beat the 66% break even rate, which is a completely you know, reverse way of thinking about things. And I think that's the reason why it's been so successful is because I just sort of, I stopped trying to figure out how much money I wanna make. I try to figure out how much money I wanna lose and then uh, work my way backwards to how much money I wanna um, try to make uh, against those losses. Does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody following what I'm saying? So, um, okay, so, you know, a little bit of a reversal here in the Dow, the uh, NAS continues to hold bid. Um, anybody who's new in the, uh, do you, they're on the algo, they're on the algo, yes, so like, this is Gary, so I'm trying to tell you, I literally haven't closed this thing down, have not closed the algo down since middle of last week. You know, I just, cause I was just like, hey, let's just see what happens. And every day I'm, I'm, I'm completely shocked at the fact that it has, and it's, it's gonna, there's gonna be days where this thing is gonna get chopped. I mean, there's just no doubt in my mind it's gonna get chopped. I'm just waiting for the chop day. But so far it's been ridiculously robust. I mean, there's no way this thing should be that robust. Um, we've just been, I think in a very, very fortunate market. I mean, I haven't had the kind of, you know, zigzaggy, zigzaggy market environment. Um, although we've had a little bit, and I think part of the reason what, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is the reason why I've been able to survive the zigzags is because I wipe my stops to a volatility imprint that is um, um, a, that is specific to the instrument, and that has eliminated a lot of unnecessary stops. Once you, you know, making money in this thing is 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 a given. The the, the art is in figuring out how not to lose money or how to lose money as little as possible, right? So I think that maybe was the uh, was the great thing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm referring to the uh, Trend Finder EA. Correct, uh, sorry guys, there's only one algo that I'm running. I'm running the Trend Finder EA. Now I'm running this obviously on a very experimental basis. I'm running this on one minute charts, you know, we're running on futures. So um, your experiences are gonna, you know, probably wi vary widely off of that unless you're mimicking me on, on futures. But, you know, I don't think it's gonna vary that much widely because because uh, generally the prices have been very much in line. Um, and even yesterday when I, when I left you guys, we, I left you with a whole bunch of trades on the one hour chart in FX, which I already forgot about, but they all worked. Like I'm like, you know, like right after I left you guys, you were a Kiwi hit, um, I think Aussie hit, I forgot what the hell else we had hit. I already, you know, I already forgot. We can go back to the video and look at it. But like I, in an, hour, an hour later in the, in the room, I posted to everybody, I said, hey guys, all those, those hourly FX trades totally hit. And again, um, what's like the, the big innovation that I decided to do in all of that is to use the, um, uh, since on, on, the, on the hourly, I'm basically using um, uh, one fifth of the underlying, right? So uh, if the underlying is a hundred, like in other words, if the price on the underlying is a hundred or let's just use something like, like regular, like, um, Dollar yen, the underlying is 109. It's basically 110, right? So one fifth of that would be 22 pips. So my, my stop would be 22 pips and my target would be 11 pips. That's how I would work my way backwards. Like with, with dollar CAD, um, the underlying is 121 pips. So the stop would be 24 pips or 25. Let's say make it 25 pips and the target would be 12 pips or 12 and a half, right? That was a dollar CAD was one of those things that, that we had that, that worked yesterday. So, um, you know, I think that's a, uh, it doesn't, you know, you're not going to pick direction correctly all time. The, the, the big essence is to avoid unnecessary stops, to avoid chop as much as possible. By the way, I actually got, the algo just got long. I should be, I should stop talking. Um, got long uh, Dow over here. I don't know why I got long Dow over here. Um, what was the trigger on the Dow? Hang on. What was the trigger on the Dow? Was there a dip trade? Oh, there's a whole bunch of dip trades. I don't. I think I have this in, incorrectly configured. 
what was my ah uh, okay anyways um Wang Gao at um 77 right so let's just uh let's just play along we're gonna, we're gonna follow this oops uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really fucking up right now. So, um, uh, never mind. All right, I, I I lost the 77s. Never mind. All right, Dow is like, let me let me just lay everything out. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just um, still trying to get myself all organized and all this crap. All right. So we're gonna do the Dow. Dow was long 77s. You know, if you're if you're in that trade, that would have already worked for you. Let me just lay this out. Why is this not working? Oh, okay. Say so, okay. I'm just getting used to this new layout that I'm trying. I thought that was going to be so cool, but it's also kind of a little difficult. Anyways, should have been long 77. That were already hit, hit target. Um, the algo stays for the full 20 points, so it's, it's holding to, to 97. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to do a, a poor entry right now. But if you guys, if you guys took it, that would have been great. Um. Henry, sorry, sorry, Henry. I'm uh, uh, who is who's saying it doesn't seem to work on Pepperstone? Why is it, it this Trend Finder EA? Are you sure you're using? Are you using MT4 version? And um, Trend Finder, it's a it's a it's an MT4 EA. It's going to work on every broker that has MT4. When you say it doesn't work on Pepperstone, what do you mean exactly? Are you sure you have it properly configured? Um, I can't, um, I'm not, I can't do, um, you know, MetaTrader consulting because that's not what part of the course is. Um, it's, uh, let me see what it's saying. It works on MT5, works on MT4. There's an MT4 course and an MT, uh, that I gave you for free in the link that I gave you. Everybody has that link on the bottom of the thing. Watch the course, learn how to install MT4, MT5 EAs. I can't teach you MT4, MT5 EAs. Um, I have an MT4, MT5 free course every Monday. That uh, actually, it's it's every one. Is it every Monday? Yeah, I think it's every Monday. This this month, it's every Monday that I teach. You're welcome to attend that. But any problems that are, that, that that are technical, you guys got to fix them yourselves. Um, there's no way it doesn't work on Pepperstone. I I I, I will test it out to, today just to to be sure. But it's it's an MT4, MT5 product. It's, it works on every broker that has an MT4, MT5 product. So. Unless you can give me a specific reason um, what it's doing, you know, then you know I can't help you. Um, do I recommend a US-based broker broker? If you're a US-based person, you, you only have a choice with a US-based broker. You don't have a choice with anybody else. So if you're a US person, we only recommend OAN that we hate forex.com. But you know, it, it, you can trade forex.com too. But uh, but we like OAN. Um, if you're a non-US person, you're very lucky, you can do whatever the hell you want. And if you're a non-US person, then we recommend ACAP because that's a great broker. That's our partner. A great spreads works. Everything works on it beautifully. The uh, Trade Finder works really, really well. Um, yeah, a link to the MT4 courses. Um, ah, Jesus, it's honestly, guys. Um, I don't, you know, I don't have it right now, and. Um, uh, you know, the basic underlying assumption of the course is you guys know, got to know MT4, MT5. You got to know this. If you don't, I'll be happy to, to send that out later. Um, there is, as I said, a free course in the email I sent you. So learn, take the free course. Don't ask me questions that are basic because, because um, I can't help you on that. You got to learn it yourself. This is a, just a fundamental skill set of how, you know, EAs, if, if you're buying an EA, I'm assuming you know how to use an EA. Um, I can't, you know, I can't teach you that. All right, back to trading. Um, nothing much going on right now. I expect nothing uh, today, guys. I literally expect a very, very dead day. Um, so, you know, uh, we can take a look at FX a little bit and do a little bit longer term analytics and catch some possible trades um, that may happen later in the day. I, as far as like my own accounts, I wouldn't touch, you know, I'm running the algo, as I said, for curiosity sake, and it seems to be working, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to get chopped up and, into, um, into FOMC, I'm almost certain it's probably going to lose a couple hundred bucks into FOMC because of chop. Uh, but I'm just curious to see how it runs, so I'm, go I'm, I'm going to let it run. But generally, my view is 
trading today starts after FOMC because that's really where you're going to get directionality and momentum. And it's probably going to last into the Asia session. So there should be quite a lot of really good setups, both in FX and in, um, um, in stock index futures. So um, let's look at the hourly charts first on FX and just see what's, um, uh, what's going on over here. Um, okay, so let's go look at Aussie. Aussie has no signals. Kiwi, no signals. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so CAD, positive signal now. As I said, you can take the trade now. And, and so somebody was asking me, is this on a one minute chart? No, um, the rule of thumb is I use one basis point on a one minute chart. I use 20% of the notional on a one hour chart. And I use 100% of the notional on the daily chart. So if I'm trading dailies, my stop would be, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's actually 200% uh, uh, of notional. My target is 100% notional. So my stop on Canadian would be 240 pips, target 120 pips. I'm looking for, for the notional value for a take profit and you know double that for a stop. For an hourly, I'm looking for one fifth the notional. So in this case, that's 25 pips stop, 12 target. If you took this long here at 85, you know, you'd be looking for about like 97, 98, right? So you, you're actually very, very close to, 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 to uh, target in Canada. Here, this was yesterday's Canadian trade. And that's what I was telling you about how that worked really, really well, right? Um, Euro dollar, uh, no trades. Pound dollar, no trades. Euro yen, nothing close. Euro yen actually dropping, dropping below 200 SMA, kind of showing a little bit of weakness. That's an interesting little look for us. Pound yen holding bid. Pound yen actually has a trade here. So it's, a, you know, it got shook. So pound yen, well, what's the stop here? It's 155, which is about 32, 32 pips uh, to the stop and about 15 pips to the target. So if I took this trade over here, the close was 21, right? My, start, my stop would be 54 and 91, right? But I'm actually, I could actually enter here at 06, a little bit better trade. I'm still, I would still, I would still use a 30 pip stop um, with a 15 pip target. So if I'm, let's say I'm long 06, um, targeting uh, 20, okay, that would be, the, you know, that would be my, my, my trade right now. Um, but again, as I said, every trade right now is a complete um, flip of the coin because we're just going to be marking time ahead of, ahead of Pompsy. I don't think you're going to get any um, directional movement. That's useful, but still, you know, it's a signal, so you can take it. Um, no Swissy, your Aussie has nothing. Um, your Kiwi has nothing. Your Swiss, Dollar Swiss, very clean. Pound Aussie. Oh. Um, so you, here's how my my stops work, and you can see it. You know why it makes such a huge difference. So Pound Aussie or Pound Kiwi is a 200 pip instrument. So that means it's a 40 stop 20 target. You see, you see how, why that makes a big difference. Um, and uh, you know, and it doesn't mean that it always works. Like it, it would have missed here. And I think it probably would have missed here 65 to, no, that would have made it about 81, 82. So the second trade would have made it. Um, Euro pound on the other hand is a very, very tight pair. It's 85, right? So, a, 20% of that is, 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 is like 16 pips. So it's like a 15 pip stop and a six, seven pip target. As a matter of fact, we have a sell here, right? So um, this is sell your pound. We can try to take that at 85, 85, targeting 85, 78, stop would be 86, okay? So that's, and you know, that could be like a three hour trade the way this thing moves. Uh, but that's a reasonable trade here at these levels, right? Your CAD, um, your CAD had a trade that kind of was early, was mildly okay. I don't know, 47, so that'd be 14. Yeah, that would have worked. That would have worked. Um, pound CAD. Pound CAD has no signals, had no signals. 
So um, Euro pound is the only like sort of a clean signal. Pound yen is a little bit late, but you know, worthwhile maybe taking. Um, other than that, we got nothing going on here. I'm trying to, how can I get hold of this thing? Uh, we move, okay. Um, back to the one minute chart for just a little bit and then we'll do dailies if you guys want. And then whatever, whatever you guys want to do as far as, uh, um, as for, oh, we want to, you guys want to talk gold and, and crypto. Let's talk gold and crypto in just a second. We'll do that in a second. Um, bu, 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 bu. NAS still actually strongly bid. Um, Dow collapsed, that whole big run up in the Dow sort of collapsed. Um, let me just, give me just one second, guys. I just want to synchronize my trading view with my algo because I'm trying to figure out why I have a divergent. Was it a three? Is a trend filter on three? This one was maybe it's on three. Why am I not getting any signals here? Give me just one sec, guys. I just want to check something. Bit properties. That's a five. Oh, wait, hold on, sorry, let me just do this. Properties. Now it's a two, five. Counter is two and dip is five. Huh. Huh. All right, sometimes I get a, I get a divergence between, between MT5 and uh, um, short trading view and there's nothing much you can do about it. So let me just change that back to two because that was the right config. Oh, maybe I know what it is. It's not, ah, damn it, that's what it is. I'm like, why is this? So I always forget that the uh, MACD is not enabled. So yeah, so this was, this was the trend signal on the algo. It kind of came up and it looks like, yeah, I just got, just got clipped out actually. I just got clipped out a little bit on, on that. The algo, the algo got stopped on that because it's now it's going now it's going into that choppy mode that you guys can really really see. Um, in the last three hours, you entered dollar yen and Aussie uh, dollar is going nowhere. Should, should I hold or exit? Um, that all depends. Um, uh, you know, as I said, I don't. And I, you gonna right now? Nothing is going to happen until FOMSI. If you know, if you think your positions are positive into FOMSI, hold on. Um, if you don't have any clue, then I would just get out and wait. Um, you're going to get a lot of volatility after FOMC. And, um, you know, honestly, there's just, today is just one of those days where I, there's nothing to trade. Um, and you have to know when you have those kind of days and not force any trades. So I'm not really forcing any trades today precisely for that reason, because, uh, I, you know, there's nothing to do. We're, we're going to do this. It's going to look like a electrocardiogram of, uh, of a patient who's having a, a heart attack, you know, a stroke um, until about two o'clock. And then we're going to get big, big um, directional movements both ways, probably, and maybe one way, depending on what they say. But the more, you know, right now, the market is just, just positioning. Nobody's, you know, they just move, dealers just moving up and down, up and down, up and down, uh, breaking it up. Um, which brings me to, let's take a look at crypto. Crypto actually had a, had a big dump overnight, right? And if you had traded crypto full force, let me see if I can go full screen here with you guys. Oh, can I do that? Oh, look at that, I can do that. That's so cool. Okay, so, um, you know, as you can see crypto going full force, the one minute chart just, you know, you would have, you would have killed it. Unfortunately, the, you know, the problem with crypto is that this is not a realistic chart because the spreads are just, you know, it's twenty-one dollar spreads, right? So, and this is like on on exchanges. I don't, I don't know what you, the broker probably is like a fifty dollar spread. So, I don't, I don't think you could trade crypto on anything smaller than a five minute chart, right? Oh, um, I'm short. Just to let you guys know, the the algo went short Dow right over here. Sorry, let me go one minute chart. I uh, went short Dow here on on this signal over here. So we we could we could just give it a shot. Let's go. We'll just play around with it. So I'm short um, here. The, the signal was actually over here. I would have I would have already probably made target. But let's just play. You know, see if um, 
just since we got nothing else to do, might as well just just play it for fun. Um, but as I said, I fully expect it to be chopped out here today. So, um, and there's a big divergence, by the way. The NAS is really trading so much better than Dow, right? NAS is like running towards the uh, 14100 level. Dow is just um, sucking air. And it looks like we might be able to get it. Four, I'm looking for five. Come on, give me the five. I'm not moving this. I'm not moving this. And I either get the five or we're going to get stopped. Right, I'm making it with TP is 36. I need 36. No, it's not moving it. It's really, really, it's good. This is, this is what happens all day long today. Just nonsense, 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 non-directional nonsense. But, uh, wow, Jesus, look at the, it's so slow too. Look, what's the, uh, whoa, very sloppy and slow. Okay, I'm gonna leave us alone. Let's uh, let's go to the full chart. I wanna go back to crypto for a second because crypto is really interesting. So we're gonna to go to the five minute. And, um, oh, I think, uh, oh, I, I just got done. Of course, of course, as soon as I took my eye off the ball, no, did I not get done? What's going on? Oh, I have a better, I have a worse price. I have a worse price. And my algo has a much better price. So that's why I, was, I thought I was getting done. Let's see if I get done. 40. 39, 38, I need 36. 30, uh, come on, come in. Nope. All right, screw it. I'm not, I'm not gonna play this game with the market. That's always, it's always a, a dangerous game. So here's uh, five minutes on Biddy. And you know, around 5.45, he actually had a sell signal here early. Secondary sell signal confirms it. 40,000, it really drops all the way down to like a thousand points. I mean, a really, really great signal. Um, so here's a good question. How do you trade? And I really don't know. This is something, this is something we, we need to think about. So, you know, if we're trading daily, um, you know, um, I think, you know, like, what would I say on the notion of 34,000? One basis points is to be 100 basis points, to be 342. Yeah. So if we're using 100 basis points for the daily, which is 1%, so that would be like a 4,000. No, I take it back. Wait, you can't, you, 400, is it 400? My God, my, my math is horrendous. I'm sorry, guys. 40,000 divided by 100 is equal to 400. 400 is by no means a um, viable stop for a daily Bitcoin. I, I'm trying to figure out what kind of volatility would you do? So 1%, it moves like 5% a day. I think that's probably the right, that's probably the right trade is like 5% of notional, which would be 2,000. So it's a 2,000, 1,000. That's not even, you know, honestly, I've seen this thing move 2,000, 1,000 an hour. I, really, I, don't, I honestly don't, I don't have, since I don't trade Bitcoin, I don't have an intelligent way to gauge where the stops, the proper stops would be on this. Um, you know, maybe let's let's try. Let's just look at ATR. I mean, that seems kind of crazy, but uh, so if we go to the daily ATR and we go to indicators, just to give us an idea of what is the daily ATR, and it's like around yeah, it's about four thousand, a little bit less than four thousand. So it's, so it's four thousand for the daily ATR. So really, yeah. So like. Two times ATR, it'd be 8,000 stop. That would be the proper stop. So we have an 8,000 stop on a daily, right? And then and if we go backwards from that, the hourly is about, you know, uh, one fifth of our daily. So that would be 8,000 divided by four times 0.2 times 0.2. 
1600 on the hour. That makes, wow, it's kind of crazy, but it does make sense. So it means if you're trading the hourly charts, you need about a $1,600 stop on, yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. Look at this. I mean, you have a, you have a, you have a, a you know, $1,000 candles. So 1600 hour stop and 800 a dollar target on the hourly. So that's, you know, one fifth. And then that's, and the one tenth of that would be, so then on the five minute, you trade with an 800 to, to a 400 target. That's what he would do. So we're going back to the, go back to the five minute. Um, we're trading with a, with an 800 stop 400 target, right? And that's kind of like we know where you are, where your sweet spot is on the five minute. Um, so, you know, if you're long over here, it's 277, you're looking for, you don't quite make the, you only have, 300 here. So, you know, this you would have gotten stopped out um, on this move. Um, this dip buy would have been nothing, 100, 200, nothing much. Got, gotten stopped out here, but you would have made 800 here, um, you know, to the downs, you know, to the downside. So, for me, 400 here. Um, this trade would have worked. This trade, I'm, I wonder, this is interesting. So this is like, if you're using that kind of volatility, I'm just curious, do you survive the, on a five minute, the 800 moves? So 42, so that the stop would be 39.4. And where's the stop here? Yeah, you would survive. That's actually interesting. So you long here, you survive the, uh, survive the stop and that hits you on a target. So it's probably the right, it's probably the right vol signature which is just insane but that's the right vol signature for bitcoin on a five minute chart you're trading with an 800 stop 400 target and that way you will avoid a lot of chop trades and hopefully put yourself on the right side of whatever you know trend um trend you get um you know you still would have gotten stopped out a couple of times here but you would have survived most most of the envelope um yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, that's that, that, I mean, I understand it's crazy, um, but that's that's actually the beauty of our system. You know, the beauty of our system is understanding because 99%, well, not 99%, I'm exaggerating. I would say 80%, 20% of the reason why something doesn't work is because you have the wrong analytics. You just, you just have a really dumbass strategy. But most people actually have a good strategy, but a lot of times the strategy fails because they have the wrong stops and the wrong targets. And that's the hardest part, figuring out the right stops, the right targets. And the only way you can do that is if you look at the volatility signature of the asset. And if it's an insanely you know, large volatility, that's what you need to do. Because, and everybody goes, oh, I want to make, you know, I, I can see I can make a hundred, you see, I make a hundred pips of uh, a candle on, on Bitcoin. I should just trade for that. You could, but you're basically setting yourself for failure because, because there's such huge volatility, you're not gonna get the frequency of accuracy you need because you need the frequency of accuracy to overcome the, um, the structure, right? Um, so anyways, that's Bitcoin. Ethereum is a much more um, calmer trade, right? And let's go back, I'm just curious, let's go back to the ATR on, on Ethereum, just, just to give myself anchoring. Because again, I'm so, um, well, Ethereum has what? What is that? It's a. It's about. Is, is that right? It's a. Can't be right. Oh, oh, oh! I'm on the. I'm on the five minute chart. Jesus, sorry, sorry. Let's go to the daily chart. Always go to the daily chart. Okay, so on Ethereum on a daily chart, that's a basically about a 400, 300. It's basically come down to about 200. But like, okay, so let's say it's a 300. So it's a 600 on a daily double double ATR. So 600. Um, on a daily, that uh, one fifth of 600, 600 times 0.2, it's about 120 on the hourly. That makes perfect sense. And then how do we degrade it down to, um, oh shoot, what was it? It was, it was, eight, it was one tenth of the day of, on the five minute. So that would be 30. Did I degrade? It was 800 to 400, it was 8,000, so this is 300. Yeah, it's one-tenth on the five. 
So if we go on the five, so that would be like a 30, 30 point stop on a five with a, which I guess is okay, yeah, because this is pretty tight. 30 point stop on the, on the Ethereum with a 15 point target on the five kind of actually works pretty well. You know, you're catching it here, um, 31 against 62. Well, you would have got, you know, you, you, you got stopped here. 30 was a little too, um, too tight. So yeah, you got stopped here, but you would have made it here. You'd have made it here. Um, you made it here. Even here, you're looking for 15. It's a 50, you came in. Oh, here's a time to sell now. So the, the entry would have been at 53. And you're looking for, just for argument's sake, you'd be looking for like about a 15. So that's a, let's say 40. I'm looking for 40. Um, let's see if Ethereum comes down to, you know, to the 40s on that. Um, Oh, hey, while we're putzing around, I just saw that my algo made money. So this made money. This actually made money a little bit a while back while I was, while I was yapping away. I don't know if any of you guys had the, uh, had the Dow short, but that worked. You know, um, what is the green and red indicator on the graph? Oh, that's the, uh, um, that's the, uh, the trend envelopes. Um, this is, so um, this is MACD. 12 against 26. If 12 is below 26, it's a, it's it's a it's a you know red envelope. If it's if it's above, it's a green envelope, and that, and that is anchored against the much larger 200 period SMA trend, right? So what we're doing is we're always looking for sell signals as long as as long as this price structure is underneath the 200 SMA, and then you know we have various you know various signals depending on whether it's a it's a green envelope or a red envelope and how we're going to follow it. All right, so that's pretty much it. But yeah, that's that's uh, that's how it plays out. Um, anyways, I think I've I've tortured you guys enough today. I don't have any uh, uh, you know I, I made my whopping you know five points here and five points on on uh, NQ, and that's about all I think I'm going to be able to do today because as I said um, there's nothing to do until until Fed comes in. Um, but you know the algo, hey, you know the algo just held tight, right? The algo was. Uh, um, the algo actually held for 20 points and made full 20 points at the, at the proper entry. It came in over here and came out over here. So um, that was, you know, that was a good trade. Um, and I, you know, so back to back to crypto and looking at crypto as an idea. We're going to eventually start trading crypto, and I'm, I'm actually super excited to do that. Um, and I and I know that ACAP is actually um, going to lay down like 10 or 12. Uh, different instruments on crypto, so it's going to make it a lot easier for us to uh, to trade a wide variety of stuff. But I think you know we know our we know our strategy, and what we need to really really know is the volatility signatures of these things. I mean, I'm applying everything I've applied in in, in FX uh, works perfectly fine, right? Because we know FX cold, we know we know the the, the really really low volatility. Um, all of those signatures, you know, work really well. And so on and so forth. We know uh, Nasdaq super well. We know that it's about one and a half times the uh, notional volatility, and that works really, really well. And so on and so forth. We really, you know, we haven't traded crypto long enough to kind of apply the exact same formulas. So we're going to have to adjust those formulas. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't. My my instinct says 30 is probably going to be too um, uh, too tight for ETH. It's probably going to have to be like ETH is probably ETH at 2000 is, is probably going to be the kind of volatility that Dow is at, 30, at 34,000, meaning that we need 40 stop, 20 target on ETH to make, you know, to make, uh, to make it viable, which is probably going to be less. I think it's as good a, um, um, a beginning point as any for us to, uh, to trade with. So maybe that's, that's, that's the volatility signature we're going to attach to. But we'll, you know, we'll watch that and see if that works. Um, we'll be able to test it pretty well once we... Uh, once we can get all of those instruments on the on the platform. Um, okay. Any um, any other questions? Um, yeah. So, Bollinger Bands. I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, Kathy has has a very has, has her own specific version of Bollinger Bands. I'll leave it to her. Um, I'm actually. I love my system, and it completely avoids Bollinger Bands. And I and I'm. And I and I think what, you know for what we do, putting Bollinger Bands will only pollute the system. 
So I am not, I've looked at it. It's, 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 it, it actually detracts from the system. So don't, um, you don't need to reinvent it. The system works great. Literally, I have to keep saying it to myself also. You don't need to improve the system. Your only job to be successful is to figure out the right volatility um, envelopes. Once you put the right volatility envelopes, the system makes money by itself. That's, the, that's what we need to do. So that's what we're going to focus all of our attention on, okay? Oh, gold, gold, gold. Oh, my God. Gold, I totally forgot gold. All right, let's look at gold. Let's look at gold. All right, so gold, by the way, so notional is about 2,000. Um, one basis point of that is 20, right? So, uh, but gold volatility, I think we have to go back to gold volatility. I think gold volatility on a daily basis is, is no more than 20. Let's go. Let's go see, look what a daily is. Um, indicators, average true range. Yeah, it's like, uh, this is dailies, right? So it's, it's one basis point at a day. Gold is a very low volatility instrument right now. So if you're trading 20 on a day, that's, that's your daily. So we're gonna do double, that's 40. So if you're trading dailies, you're trading 40, 40, 20 on a, uh, on a you know, daily stop target. To bring that down to the hourly, which is I think as low as you're gonna be able to get it. Um, so it's one fifth, one fifth of 40, that's five. Is that correct? Yeah, no, no, no. hold on, 40 times 0 0.2, eight, eight. So it's an 8.4 on the hourly, and then 10% of 40 is about 4.2. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. You could trade, you could trade gold on a 4.2 basis, meaning, meaning four stop two target on a five-minute chart. Let's look at this. So we got, you know, five-minute chart, a lot, a lot of choppiness, a lot of choppiness. So 60, I'm trying to trade, nah, not even 61. That's not doing 60, 57. So they get stopped out. Um, Gold, the gold is basically Chop City over here. But it, it, it gives me a trend, set, trend sell over here at 58 against 60. So that survives the four and then makes the move here. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Yeah, I think four, two, you know, you're, gonna, you're obviously going to get chopped into these areas. But as long as you get just even a modicum of movement, you get a move here that, that makes money. You get a move here that makes money. Um, you get a, you don't quite get the move here. If you're, you know, you're a buyer over here. Um, you're, it's actually interesting. If you're selling over here, I wonder if you survived the short. Uh, what is that, 58? So you gotta go 62, what's the high here? 61, yeah, you survive the short and you make money. You actually, um, most of the time, you're on the right side of this move with this, with this right volatility signature, right? So that's actually pretty good. I think that's, that's probably the right, the right structure if you're doing a five minute chart. But you know that's obviously you know not what we uh, like to do. If you go on a, on the hourly chart, um, you're trading on the hourly chart. You're trading what does that say? You're trading um, eight four. Um, that that's a very generally a pretty decent signal. Good signal here. Good signal here. This fails, but this is a good signal, and that's exactly what you want. You want three out of four. If you're if you're three out of four to the good, you're at seventy five percent winning on a sixty six percent break even. That's really where we want to be, right? So that's probably the right signature uh, trades um, for most of the time on gold. Um, gold is just, I think, not ready for prime time yet. Gold is still gold. You know, the other thing is um, our stuff really works best when we get a running asset. This is not a running asset yet. It, it needs to run one way up or down. And it's kind of still basically, if you look at it, um, you look at it on a daily chart. I mean, what is it doing on a daily chart? It's doing nothing. It's just been, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's less than a hundred point range. We needed like to have a three, 400 point monthly range. Like we need, when it was a running asset in April, like that would have been a great time for us. Even this was been a good time because all of the declines here was a good running, you know, good running. This is from, from August 20th, from like when it hit 2000, um, we would have been short most of the time against what everybody's conventional wisdom was. And uh, it would have been a great trade. And now it's just basically, you know, really, really, uh, Die. The volatility for the last what since May has been 800 to, to not 100 100 dollars of, of movement. So it's sort of sort of very very compressed. Um, so we have to be you know a little patient. But within within those volatility signatures, I think they would work well. With so many buys and sells, how do you choose which ones to take? Oh, um, so Don, the algo takes the first available one. That's what I taught in the class. It doesn't matter. The, the, um, um, 
the thing about the, the uh, strategy is it's not the particular signal, it's being on the right side of the big trend. As long as, you're, as, long as, as, as you got the big picture correctly, you're almost guaranteed to make money on any one of these signals, right? As long as you're buying when you're above the 200 and selling uh, when you're below the 200, you're pretty much going to be okay. You know, you're obviously going to have, you know, at, at transition points, you're going to have some conflict, but that's just generally um, the case. And you can see this much better, of course, like on a, on a short, short period, of, like on a five minute chart. As long as you know, I'm selling, 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 right? Pretty much selling, you know, there's nothing here to, to make me buy. We really have, there's been no reason to buy here since the, since the 15th of June, right? It's all been sell signals primarily. And I, I could take any of these sell signals. As long as I got the right stop target, um, I'm winning. Okay, so that's that's the beauty of the algo. The you know the algo doesn't discriminate. We have the algo can take just one signal or it can take all of them. And I have the algo running in all mode, meaning it's just take, taking whatever the next available signal is after it completes the trade. Okay, does that make sense to you? All right, guys, we can sit here twiddle our thumbs and um, um, wait until FOMSI. and then you know we'll come back tomorrow. And see you know, see what's going on. In the meantime, just visiting our um, visiting our FX ideas. This is the hourly ideas. The, well, the one thing I had was the uh, pound yen to the upside. I said let's buy the sixes, and it obviously it actually worked over here, right? So if we bought the sixes, it went down to four, it went up to like fifteen, close enough. I mean, like plus ten, plus eleven. Um, not quite the fifteen that I that I that would have hit target, but you know, well, you know, good enough uh, for the trade. Was there was anything else? Was there, I don't think there was anything else that that showed up on the hourlies that that was a trade. Cat was cat a trade? Oh yeah, cat was a trade. So cat is just floating. Cat cat we would cat we were like long 80, 82, 83, and I said, hey, let's you know it it, it was like a twelve point thing to about ninety five. It didn't quite make it to ninety five. So basically, cat is floating. Let's touch base tomorrow. Let's, uh, this time I'll remember, we're, we're long cat around 83, target here would be 95, right? With a, with a stop at around um, 60 or so, right? So let's see if, yeah, but again, this, it's Fomsi, you know, who knows, who knows where this thing is gonna go. So that's basically the only, the only things we have here that are of interest. Uh, so let's catch up tomorrow and we'll see that. How would you do basis points on various time frames? Um, the basis points are always off of the dailies. Charles, so uh, ETH is 2,450, right? So 1% is 24, and a basis point would be like 2.4, right? Okay, so the rules of thumb that I'm using, and again, these are just rules of thumb, is um, the way the way I used it the way I used it on um, on ETH ETH is two times the daily as my stop. So if, if the daily is is um, no no sorry Jesus Christ I'm, I'm getting myself confused. The ATR on the two times ATR on ETH, which is which is what was it? It was like three hundred. So it was three hundred, right? So six hundred six hundred for a daily stop, right? And um, and then I'm just basically, I'm sorry. And, and then what I'm doing is I'm doing one fifth of that, one fifth of that for the hourly. So whatever is my daily stop, the best, the better I think is what's my daily stop, right? Um, for uh, FX and, uh, uh, for FX and, and for equities, which are very, very simple, clean, long historical things, we know what they are. I just simply use, um, you know, uh, for the one minute chart, one, one basis point of the notional, right? For FX, where I'm, you know, where I'm just basically creating daily, hourly, five minutes, and that's probably the right formula. Then you can you can tra translate it to crypto. So what is my daily? And instead of looking at the ATR, I'm just simply doubling doubling the notional. Okay. Um, if um, uh, if I'm using the hourly, then I am doing one fifth one fifth my um, you know. Uh, notional chart, right? So one, sorry, one fifth my my daily stop. So for argument's sake, um, let's we'll pick something easy like dollar cat. Dollar cat is buck twenty three. So my daily stop would be two hundred forty pips. One fifth of that, one fifth of that, is 
Um, sorry, 245th. I tell you, I'm sorry, I'm getting myself confused. It's not on the day, I'm not using the daily stuff. On, I would use on the hourly, I'm using one fifth of, um, uh, of notional on FX. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna put all this together into a spreadsheet tomorrow for everybody because um, it is very confusing. It, it is, you know, we're basically as, as always, everybody who's with me forever knows that nothing we do is um, set in stone. Everything is really very reactive to, to the marketplace, which is what makes our strategy successful because we don't like dictate from the top of how they should be. Um, so I'm basically pulling this from my organic observations, but um, there are, you know, there are just different variants that apply to FX, different variants that apply to, um, to equities and completely really unknown variants that apply to crypto that, I, that I'm still struggling with. So I'm gonna put together what I call suggested recommended volatility um, uh, structures. And then you guys can have, take a look at that, you know, in a, uh, in a spread, I'll put the spreadsheet up into the, uh, into the Dropbox folder, All right? Does that make sense? Because otherwise I've, I've managed to confuse everybody on what the right stops or targets are. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very, it, it's, it's both intuitive and, and, and empirical. And that's why it's, um, you know, it's a little confusing. Um, but anyways, um, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this. You know, markets are okay. You know, we, we, we managed to make a little money today with, with, with this in an absolutely dead market. And, um, you know, I'll come back. We'll come back after Fomsi tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. So, um, you know, for now, uh, follow Caddy. Let's, let's see if, you know, if, if Caddy kind of uh, works for us. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see um, just how badly I'm, I'm letting the algo run. So I'm going to, it'll be interesting to see if the algo has managed to, managed to survive Fomsi today in this, in this choppiness. Um, all right, guys, everybody have a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Where are we here? I got to make sure I got you guys. Where is my, uh, where's my zoomy? Oh, here it is. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to close out the, uh, the meeting. Everybody have a great day.